Hi, my name is Shatadal Das. Welcome to another learning video on the topic change management. This video is different from the technical videos that I had made earlier and I hope this will provide good knowledge to my viewers. Also, please check out the other videos on my channel. So, let's start. Change is the most inevitable fact of human society. Human society has evolved from being a hunter-gatherer to a space explorer, with still continuing to evolve. But why to change? Change can happen due to many reasons, some of which can be technology, like the cost and capacity of batteries making a big time change in automobile industry, making the electric cars more affordable at the same time making more usable for long range. Social reasons like the industrialization of society meant that there was no longer need for large families to produce enough manual labor to run a farm. Industrial Revolution, when it began in 18th century, brought forth the middle class and slowly marginalized the royalty which was dominant in medieval period. War and Conflict, which is a very strong driver from bringing change in all aspects like society, technology and international relations. So we can agree that change is inevitable. For the sake of simplicity, we will restrict the discussion to changes pertaining to projects. Adopting and embracing a change has been very challenging from the beginning. Change is a process or initiative which brings up and implements a solution to a situation in an organization to improve the way work is done, usually through projects. So there is a what to change and how to change. I would put the what portion as the technical side of the change and the how portion as the people side of change. Today we will discuss the technical side of change management and will keep people side for some other video. To understand further on this subject, I would use PIMBOX 6th edition, which I will simply refer as PIMBOX from now onwards. As per PIMBOX, there are 24 processes which can generate a change request which needs to be taken for further processing. Here when I say processing, that means the change request will either be accepted or rejected or put on hold in consultation with necessary stakeholders. So what is a change management? It is a transition of process from current state to future state which occurs due to a trigger. The trigger is the reason why the organization need to change its process from current to the future state. The examples of triggers are averting a problem or improving a process or exploiting an opportunity. But improvement is not a one-time activity, but it is a continuous process and a way of life. A trigger might be required for the first time change. This is sometimes known as the reactive approach. But once the cycle is done, the future state becomes the current state and the next cycle starts. This approach is proactive. This diagram resembles more like a approach of Scrum. In fact, Scrum is an interesting framework which is currently used in IT and tech companies but has a great potential to be used in manufacturing and engineering companies. But that is a matter of another video. So we know what happens and why it happens. We need to know now how it happens. In other words, we will now explore what happens in the transition phase. First thing in this process is a change request. It is received by project manager either in verbal or written form. A change request received in written form can be considered as a formal change request and a verbal change request can be considered as informal. If the request received is an informal one, 
the project manager documents the change request formally and updates the change log. Following to that, the project manager evaluates the impact of the change on the basis of three factors of the iron triangle. For making this evaluation, the project manager might ask the project team for the information. The change request along with the details like impact on cost, scope and schedule is shared with the review committee, which has the change control board, project manager, project sponsor and customer as the members. The change control board usually comprises of the domain experts or SMEs. The review committee can ask for additional information from the project team for the change request received. After the committee has the necessary information, they can direct the request in one of the three routes. Approve the change request, reject the change request, defer it or put it on hold for future. Whatever might be the outcome, the project manager updates the change log as a part of it. In case customer is not a part of the review committee, then the change request after approval from the change control board goes to the customer. Customer can either accept the change or reject the change. Once the response from customer is received, the change log is updated. If the change request is approved, it is shared further with the project team to implement it. Implementation of the change can be in form of a document or process or product or service. Post to the change, the project manager does an impact assessment, updates the change log and puts the detail in the final project report. So this is the process of change management in projects. Similar approach can be adopted in operations or business also. This is the extract on process of change management from PIMBOK. This process is not explicitly described in PIMBOK, but after several rounds of reading from PIMBOK, I derived this process. So please provide comments if you feel something is not correct in this chart. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video was informative. Please like this video, give your valuable comments and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.